Right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome once again to our weekly broadcast uh, brought to you by Leo Crowdfunding and Property Fortress. Uh, that if you could uh, join us today. Uh, the regular attenders know that uh, my name is David Johnson. I'm the CEO of an equity property crowdfunding platform called Leo Crowdfunding. And uh, my resident co-host, uh, he's here most weeks, Mr. John Corey, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yes, uh, I'm happy to be back. We can get to that in a second, most weeks. Uh, John Corey, Property Fortress, uh, long-term property investor. And today we're in, in the majority of the IT folks, Akin and I, so like we're go, go, go IT. Yeah, and obviously delighted, um, Akin, to have you back on uh, as our special guest today. I yeah. uh, really enjoyed you last time you were on. So, uh, yeah. so welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me again. Uh, nice to see John again. Nice to see you again. Um, yeah, interested, uh, interested in seeing what you guys uh, are going to be uh, talking about later on, actually, in the day with the, with the project. Um, but yeah, for now, um, yeah, I'm going to be sharing some of the stuff that I'm doing and uh, seeing who can, yeah, who will be interested in it. So we'll see. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> I look forward to, to getting into a bit more about your, your podcast um, yeah. and uh, the, the team and your passions uh, just in a few moments. So um, as normal, we cover off a few things before we go to our special guest. And uh, first thing we're going to do is actually go over to John. I uh, indicated John actually wasn't um, on the, the, the broadcast last week. It's very, very rare he misses. But um, we, we had to forgive him for last week because he had a rather, rather important appointment, um, uh, Mr. Corey. So I'll let you maybe explain as much as you would like to explain uh, about last week. Yeah. yeah. So um, last Tuesday, it, it was scheduled, but last Tuesday... I had my feet in the air, my head down below. So I was sort of hanging upside down for close to five hours uh, under anesthetic. Uh, I was having uh, cancer surgery for prostate cancer. And I got to read, the, because in, I did this in the US, US, uh, you own your own data when it comes to the medical records. So the doctor needs my permission to see the record he just wrote. And so I've read the results and we have, as far as I could tell, we have been cured or I have been cured. So when someone said, what'd you do in Q1? I said, well, Q1, I finished by getting cured for cancer. Uh, so yeah, I did that last Tuesday and the Thursday I wasn't quite fully there. Uh, a little bit under the weather when it comes to anesthetic and pain medicine. So probably wouldn't look good on camera. Um, but anyway, if we want to jump to today's question, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and for the record, you were kind of, well, I might be able to make it. And I'm like, take it easy, relax and uh, recover mm -hmm. fully. Um, so exactly. it wasn't for your wasn't for your lack of uh, desire for sure, but yeah, it made sense just to take it easy and uh, yeah, congratulations on the everything being a success so far. Um, yes, so getting on then to uh, today and our um, question, if people By have way, any questions, just in case I made a mistake, I confuse things uh, and I keep getting the p word right. I don't know what I said, but I meant to say prostate cancer. So it's the one that's relatively easy to cure. So that's the one. That's the one that I'm comfortable that we sorted. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, for those attending, obviously you can put your questions into the Q&A. Uh, we tend to not use the, the, the chat box. So any comments you want to make into the Q&A um, and, and we'll obviously deal them as we go through. So um, ask John, will the FCA investigate reports of non-compliant promotions? And is there a mechanism to flag these up? Um, the questioner says, I see and hear many things that seem clearly in breach of regulations. So I know this is a topic close to your heart, so mm -hmm. far away. So I have personal experience. I know they will. And I also know they don't always. Um, so you can definitely report it. It'll get logged. If there was ever a future action, having more things in the log cited against a particular person or company might be helpful if they have been operating illegally. The one thing you have to understand is the FCA is not really a policing organization. They actually... If it's going to be a criminal act, they have to send out the police to contact the local police, so to speak, or the Metropolitan Police, whatever organization is appropriate. They are essentially, the FCA is a regulator. They set the policies, the policing does the policing, the courts do the, the court action. So I would flag these up. I would send them in. It's in our best interest as a community to reduce the amount of crap that's out there. Uh, many times people sharing uh, when they do it illegally, it's because they're really a bit naive. Uh, so you could also use it as a signal that they're a bozo and that you don't want to put money into their deals because if they don't even understand the risks they're taking and the liability they're taking, 
what other risks and liability are they going to take with your money uh, if you were to invest with them? So directly to the question, yes, you can report it. There's, if you Google the FCA, they give you some ways to do it. Um, they, I think they only prosecute about 1% of the cases and they try to use their scarce resources on the uh, cases that have the biggest impact. Um, they are, but fundamentally they are regulated. They're not a police force. And I think there's obviously an issue of resources. It's probably one of the big discussions that you know the FCA are a, have a finite amount of uh, resources, stroke employees, and 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 obviously investigative capabilities. So they don't have the ability to go out. I mean, similar to the police force, you know, the big discussion around crime as well. Limited resources. Where do you put your resources? So right. um, I, I sometimes liken it, John, to the um, driving through a village at four a.m. in the morning. Uh, a country village in England, and you might be doing 120 mile an hour. Um, you mightn't get caught because the chances are there's not a, a speed trap at 4 a.m. in the morning in a country village, um, again, because of resources and, and, and timings, et cetera. But it doesn't mean you didn't break the law. It doesn't Correct. mean that if somebody happened to be there and you were caught, that you wouldn't face the consequences of the law. So, um, right. I, I like or that. Or if there was an accident. Um, so, if you're speeding and an accident has occurred, then you're in much deeper water. If you have a deal that goes off the rails and there's money lost and grumpy investors, the fact that now there's also information in your file that shows that you were operating illegally before you lost the money. So it might be a legitimate reason why the project failed, but at the same time, you're tainted. Um, so I want to leave the message that use what you see as a signal that you should avoid investing, first and foremost. Second is send it into the FCA, let them know about it. They do depend on the public to report things. And third, they can't chase everything because they're not funded to be a police force. They're funded to be a regulator. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that. Hope that answers that question uh, for the person that asked it. Okay, a couple of quick um, updates before we move to our special guest today. Uh, delighted, again, so you probably get the drum roll going. We need to get music and sound for these in the future. Um, but we have now have our third project that has successfully um, paid out or paid back the shares have been purchased back by the SPV um, so delighted that, that this one is now over the line as well and that um, a number of our investors uh, 29 of them uh, you know had their shares bought back um, at the end of last week so this was the Avon Valley apartments by Beaumont Homes uh, it had raised hundred thousand pounds on the platform from 29 investors and it was to actually purchase um, the garden uh, was what is what the, the funds were used for. Um, they then got through planning. Um, now, there was a priority share of 30% ROI paid out, which was the projected priority share. The project did take longer than was anticipated. Um, and uh, as part of the update to the shareholder investors, uh, the explanation obviously has been given as to what the, some delays were. And it did, um, the costs were higher than what were projected. Uh, and again, the, uh, fundraiser has ex explained what those additional costs were, um, full SPV accounts pr provided. But again, uh, fantastic that we've paid out another deal. And I know, John, um, this was a, one of our first deals we put together and you assisted us sort of structuring the deal at the time. And it's uh, nice to see it come to fruition. Uh, I mean, it's always good as a passive investor. And I was a passive investor. I'm one of the 29. Uh, it's always good to see deals reach the conclusion. And... The fact that it was a little bit late, that it was a little bit over budget, that's fairly normal for property. Now, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but at the same time, this isn't the first time this happened. And during COVID period, where even staff and materials were difficult to um, bring together for the project. So yeah, and the fact that I, along with the other 28 investors, um, had a priority over priority claim over their profits works for me. No, I didn't have to do any heavy lifting and um, Ed and the team took care of it. So the good thing is I've actually got Ed coming on next week to go through like lessons learned from the project. So that will provide a bit of insight and value into a, a project that's just completed, uh, which is actually hey, one, one other thing on that one. And you could say in this slide, one of the keys about the projects uh, and people should take away is being late, being over budget, having issues is so common you should diversify your investments across multiple projects. 
so that any one problem doesn't sort of slam all your money. Um, if, if they have a staff problem on one side, they may not have a staff problem on the other side. So definitely mitigate some of the risk by investing across different projects. Okay, and uh, we currently have Aldwick uh, Road down in Bognor Regis. It's live for investment. It's currently 70,600 from 33 investors uh, with a minimum raise of 100,000. Uh, there's a webinar on this today at 4 p.m. So Tina's joining for, for a Q&A uh, on, on this. Uh, it's a mixed-use refurb. Uh, they're turning the apartments into emergency housing. Uh, as part of this drive to uh, help the local community and give something back socially. Uh, estimated 12 months. Uh, projected ROI on this one is 15%. Um, it's a little bit lower than what they have offered on their previous projects, uh, but they have a funded two on our platform. They've done about 350 projects like similar to this, um, wealth of experience. And uh, the bottom line is that in the current market, there isn't any development risk of ground up. Uh, this is a quite a very simple, basic refurb of existing property. And uh, they're offering a projected 50% ROI over the 12 months. So, um, so I think ahead. it's a great sign that they've lowered the projected ROI because it signals to the marketplace that they're an experienced developer who's worked with the crowd more than once and they don't need to pay newbie rates uh, for their projects. So I ex most people, if you're raising money, you should expect to see a lower cost of funding. Institution lenders will offer you a better rate when you're more experienced and they know you better. So whether that's exactly what's going on here, but I don't see it as a negative. I just see it as, hey, this is reality. As a passive investor, like 15% with people I understand and do I like this project? I have to make an evaluation on the project, but I don't feel the same team risk for a stranger. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the benefits of crowdfunding is investors can choose to invest or not. Some investors want to you know, take maybe more risk on a, on, a, on a project because it offers a higher ROI, then great, you know, wait, wait for that project. But if you want something with a really experienced track record, uh, fundraisers who have done a number of deals, who have paid back on a deal, well then, hey, the, the trade-off for that experience is that, that you make a slightly less ROI. So investors make a decision. Uh, they, they get to vote with their money. Uh, that's one of the reasons I, I love this sort of crowdfunding structure. So if you want to join the link today, the webinar today, there's the link. Uh, 4 p.m. Tina's going to join us for a Q&A. And there's just a number of investors want to just to clarify a few things uh, before making their pledges. So we thought it'd be a good opportunity to uh, get Tina back on. And then Waits House will um, be quite soon be viewed deal. Uh, it's quite a large project uh, down in Ferrum uh, from Creation Tech and uh, keep an eye out for that as it comes. So let's get into our special guest today. Delighted um, that um, Akin has been able to join us. Uh, you were on here, I think it was maybe about a year ago now or whatever the time was. So listen, introduce yourself, let us know um, a bit about yourself, the background, then we'll get into a bit of a Q&A. Yeah, uh, hey guys, um, uh, it's Akin here. Uh, Akin of Amakian. Um, yeah, I've been in property for the last sort of three and a half years now. Um, previously to that, it's just been uh, pretty much IT, which I've been uh, talking about with John. Um, that's my background. And uh, <laughs> uh, and I've got a passion for pro property and technology, to be honest. And I'm just, um, at the moment, documenting my journey um, through my podcast, speaking to a lot of people in the industry, um, trying to give as much information as I can to the first-time buyers, first-time investors, and have conversations with experienced investors in order to kind of help other people that are trying to you know, get into the world of development like myself. So uh, yeah, that's it at the moment, still early in my journey, but um, documenting every every part of it. And uh, we're, you know, we're doing things quite uniquely, you know, we're probably the only platform that you're gonna find on sort of uh, TikTok, uh, but then we're on LinkedIn at the same time. Um, and then we're on Instagram and then, you know, we're on Twitter, we're everywhere kind of having conversations with different people trying to help what we can help basically, so yeah. Okay, and just explain your, your podcast, how often do you do it? What sort of numbers? Do you get um, in terms of your of your listens and and who you're really targeting? Yeah, so um, on a monthly basis, we're getting around two and a half k to, to three thousand uh, listens a month, which which is good, and we want to keep growing that. Um, we've got a community on probably the biggest social community on, on Instagram, um, but also on um, also on TikTok as well that we're growing as well, uh, and LinkedIn as well, and um, and yeah, our target audience is is millennials, uh, usually people from the age of sort of 24 to 35 are the people that listen to us the most. Uh, and these are people who are trying to get their first house, who already already got their second first house and trying to get their 
first property investment um, or are sort of um, are trying to, you know, bit, bit higher than that, trying to get into developments and, and, and things like that. Um, I do need to mention that um, I'm part of Black Property Network as well. So mm -hmm. um, I'm supposed to be the active, oh, I am the active CEO at the moment, I'm coming into the role uh, this month. Um, and so, wow. um, oh, yeah. So you're taking over, conquering <laughs> the world. Yeah, we're trying to, anyway, we're trying to. Um, and on that side, obviously, um, the whole idea as well um, is, is to specifically help people from from my background, uh, people from from, um, from from certain areas as well, especially in London as well. Uh, you know, in, um, helping them to educate them around property as well. And um, and yeah, on that side, we're you know very focused on again educating, but also actually connecting people to deals. And you know, that, that's what kind of crowdfunding. That's why we kind of connect with crowdfunding and, and other platforms because um, I think that's a big passion for me as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's me in a nutshell. Excellent. Okay, and you, you you stole my thunder there because I was about to say you were uh, introduced I think, to us through uh, Tony and Aisha Fori, um, yeah, yeah. owners of the Black Property Network. Um, yeah. I was speaking at one of their events uh, back, I guess, in twenty twenty now, uh, hotel room in London, sort of packed, absolutely packed. I think about one hundred and thirty, hundred and forty people yeah, yeah. Um, there, obviously hearing about property education and learning, etc. Uh, and obviously we've uh, connected connected since. So. Um, um, kudos to, to that to that network. So um, here's the questions we're going to fire through, and then we're going to just come off off uh, the screen. So you're, you're on there. So we're going to see how and why you got involved in property. What made you start a podcast? Uh, what's it like to work with two friends? And what is your passion for the future? So uh, we're going to come off that uh, uh, initially. So yeah, how and why do you get involved in property? Let's start with that. Yeah. So in terms of property, it was. Um... Yeah, I've kind of told the story. I mean, the people on my podcast kind of did the story quite well because I've said it like loads and loads of times. But um, essentially, um, my, my first introduction to property, probably the you know typical way, but you know, rich dad, poor dad, essentially. Um, my, my brother got me the book when I was in university. Um, I, I just read it and it kind of it, it changed everything for me. Uh, and that's probably a, what people say all the time, but it, that's generally what the story was. Um, in in a short period of time, um, he actually sent me the book, but he sent my older cousin the book who had just graduated. And within a couple of months, uh, he basically contacted me saying that, you know, he's going to buy a property in Birmingham. And if I wanted to kind of follow him, you know, to the viewing and obviously being a university, I never really thought that was a you know thing that we was going to do in our 20s, buy property. I always thought uh, it was something that we did in our, you know, later, later years. Um, and I thought, OK, cool. Um, I ended up following him. Uh, he ended up buying the property, um, I think about six months later, my brother um, basically took property um, equity out of my parents' house to go and buy his property, and uh, in that process, you know, he, he let me know Look, this is this is going to be ours. You know, once you're old enough, you're working now. You know, I'm sticking with a mortgage, and this this will be us as well. And that was just really empowering. You know, you know, people in, in you know in university weren't talking about buying property or anything like that. And just because I had access to sort of you know older people around me at the time, slightly older, um, it kind of exposed me, and you know, I kind of put in my mind that it was just a normal thing to get involved in property. Know, in your 20s um so yeah I, I just as soon as I left uni uh I, you know I ended up getting my um first deal which well first strategy got into my first strategy within property which was rent to rent and that was two years after I graduated um and uh was able to to grow a small rent to rent portfolio before then purchasing my first house uh and then from there gone on to do uh joint ventures as well so um you know it, there's, there's, I mean, property is a no-brainer because you, you kind of know, you know, you're kind of told you know, it's, it's good to invest in property, but physically doing it and being able to actually kind of see how it works in the UK, I think it's been an amazing experience. And, you know, I've always used my property, sorry, my tech background, my digital marketing background as a way to kind of stand out in the market. And this is why I've kind of started the podcast and, 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 in, and focused on branding quite early in my journey, because I think it's going to be important for me in my, in my later years when it comes to like raising finance and working with with people and, and and seeing what what things to focus on that I, I can kind of leverage you know all my different skill sets and things like that but yeah that's been my my intro and and why I go into property I just think it's it, I mean it's a no-brainer and I feel like it's something that I can help to actually teach quite um passionate about, about educating as well so I thought you know let me, let me pick something that I can do that's, that's kind of simple to understand that I can kind of you know once I get to my heights I can kind of say look along, along the journey I shared you know these simple ways of investing as well and you know property does that you yeah know, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's, I mean, we, we share that that desire and passion for education and yeah. uh it's obviously our name leo crowdfunding is learn earn own 
Um, yeah, yeah. John's brand, Property Fortress, is all about again learning and education, and and you know that's what I wanted to sort of pick at that a little bit more. So what what was it you felt about the younger generation? You, know, you think you sort of aim at the you know, early twenties, early thirties. So you, you were obviously quite young into property. What what is it that you feel that they're not learning or understanding or don't know that you're trying to like educate through the podcast? Yeah, so it's funny because um, these guys are fast learners, right? So uh, when I first started uh, back in 2018, when I started sort of documenting the journey and sharing stuff on the podcast, you know, people didn't know about rent to rent. People were really um, confused about, you know, you know, even stuff like mortgages, like simple concepts around like buying your first property. So at the beginning, it was just literally just going through every basic term there was in property and sharing our journey at the same time. Um, since then, they've come a long way. And most of the people that I actually started with educating now, you know, message me every other day and say, look, I'm ready to buy my first property. Or I've just bought my first property or I'm getting my second property. So these guys have come a long way. And I think for me, um, you know, these guys get the, the core concepts. They are very quick to learn. Not everyone's going to take action, but, you know, a good 10, 20% always will. And um, and then what we do is we, we just try to push ourselves, right? Like through our own journeys, um, we didn't stop with just trying to get one property and leave it. We, you know, we're trying to grow a portfolio. We're trying to be, try different things. Uh, you know, I've tried different strategies that I don't, you know, completely like. And I've said it honestly on the podcast as well, like I've tried it. Um, but what we do is that we um, bring people in as well, that are experts as well, you know, so that, you know, mm-hmm. we're not just leaning our own expertise, we're leaning on the expertise of people that are, you know, are doing deals in, in different in different ways um, and we get them to come on and share things. And we actually, the next level is going to be for us to go on site and to, to visit these guys and show, you know, visual, you know, visually what these guys are doing, you know. Thankfully mm-hmm. as well, we've built up a good uh, reputation with these guys. So we, they, they give us honest answers as well. They don't kind of hold back, which is, which is good as well. Yeah, it's interesting you say about being fast, fast learners. You know, just bring, bring John in here for a comment. I'm, I'm part of a, a, a network called the Investables. Uh, Karen and Antoine have been known, known to some people on the on the broadcast here. And I was asked a few questions actually early this morning, and uh, I made the point that I think there's never been a time now where fundraisers and investors are as educated and as knowledgeable about property investment. Um, through online, through just our, our society now, networking events, groups. You go back 30 years, you know, John, I don't know what your, your thoughts are on that, but it strikes me that when it comes to discussing, for instance, an ROI discussion like we had earlier, investors are not more choosy now because they know more, they understand maybe, you know, debt and equity a bit more, loan notes, bonds, equity. Uh, and again, on the fundraiser side, there's different ways they can get funds, source funds. So, so therefore they, again, can decide on what number they want to offer i think there that's all true and in, in the i can where the podcast of tiktok the idea that you can google things that uh COVID has proven the world is not flat it is round time zones still matter but otherwise we can immediately have meetings we can immediately engage we can listen to david's dog in the background you know we can do all these things just like that so it makes for better information flow but at the same time, when uh, people are, are also, as we can see with some blowouts recently, people can be quite lazy. They can be quite non-discerning um, because it's, ah, oh, just click the button, boom. It's like, why did you invest in that? Oh, well, because it came up. You know, it's like, so uh, people have to be adults. They have to be responsible. They have to have engagement. They have to use the material and the information that's out there, but there's always other people you can go ask. That I think is the bigger thing is that there's a community of people. You can reach out to people who sound like you, look like you, think like you. So you can find your property investor tribe for the Southeast London market or whatever little mini market you want to focus on. And I want to focus on rent to rent HMOs with occasional SA. Well, I bet you can find those people. So then you can ask real questions. And you want to add that? I no, I think it's completely true. I think um, the, you know the we live in such an amazing time to this in the world because um, the barrier to entry um, for so many things has come down. Um, it's no longer about you know how you look or, or where you're from or your you know your financial background. You know, it's, it's more about you know your the quality of your work and being able to you know build a reputation. Um, and and like I said, I think that the biggest uh, hurdle now is actually being lazy. You know, lazy in the mind and being able to actually go out there 
and do 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 the due diligence um in anything you're doing and and, and things like that. Yeah. I think the tribe has helped so much because you know no matter what now, um, generally I can access the information that I need in order to kind of keep educating the people I want to educate and also grow my own you know grow my own portfolio my own knowledge you know what I mean you can you can you can join a group on Facebook about being a developer and you can pay for, pay for a course and you know for, before you know it you're in you're in a community now and you're, you're finding deals and you're doing things so I think it's a great time to be alive uh, the internet's done that for us um but I think it's a, at the same time my own opinion it's a short sort of uh I guess uh, opening you know you know you know for us to kind of all get in the people that want to get in get in basically and, and kind of change their destiny in terms of you know where they will project to go and um, they can you can leverage the internet to do great things but you can also use it to do nothing so yeah it's just it's i think it's important good to use point. it the right way yeah yeah really good point about action at the end of the day opportunity is, is nothing unless you take action you know so yeah. so sort of moving moving to a bit and of take a the right action too because yeah. yeah. there's a lot of people are quite busy it's like but what's the point mm -hmm. so and it's very easy to get distracted these days. So anyway, I think it's a it's a great time to be alive. It's a great time to be able to invest and reach out to other people. And you have to own your future. You have to own the decisions. You have to own the mistakes. And the resources are there. Yeah, that's a great a great way of putting it, John. Uh, so moving towards a wrap up, um, you obviously run the podcast with two colleagues. Uh, I assume they were friends before you started the podcast. But what's it like working with sort of friends? Uh, in, in a business environment where you've got to make decisions and you've got to maybe you might have one that agrees with other two or vice versa how do you how do you find that yeah yeah so um it's getting better now because I, I originally I was the youngest of the, of, of the three and sometimes that, that kind of messed me up because they're both best friends as well so I didn't always get the, the right decisions but um it's been interesting you know I just you know we're 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 so honest about our journey you know we, we started about three years ago uh well I did actually they started five years ago um, with their property journey and you know it's it's a balance between you know you're, you're running the property side of the business you're you're running the, almost the educational side of the podcast and things like that, and we've all got other things you know in our lives you know life happening marriages kids and things like that so you know it's such a whirlwind of like life at the moment but you know the, both guys are you know um, I think most importantly they've got high integrity which I think is the most important thing in business um, and they're and they're good guys you know you know we we, we do fight and we do uh, argue quite a bit. Um, especially around the ideas and you know yeah well I, I I like to you know we all have different ideas and different like, similar visions but slightly different visions as well on what we want to do but ultimately the guys are great and um, you want to be building sort of long-term relationships and long-term businesses with people like that so yeah it's, it's all good yeah a, a wee idea for you is do a, do a live um, podcast in one yeah. of your strategy meetings with, yeah, your, yeah, with yeah. Your, the three of you yeah, yeah. <laughs> and let, let to, your audience hear the discussions and yeah, then you can you vote, get, get the audience to vote <laughs> as to what you should do. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll start some facts. You might see some facts in the background, but uh, hopefully not. But yeah, no, it's yeah, a lot. No, no, it's grand. So, Ro that, robust that's... conversation. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Unfiltered, unfiltered for sure. Unfiltered. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's, a, that's a good one. Unfiltered. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just just like your coffee, unfiltered. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the last question then. Um, mm -hmm. So we know your passion is education. So look, looking yeah. forward the next sort of year, two years, what what's yeah. what's your passion? What gets you out of bed in the morning? What's what's driving you? Yeah, so um, I would say um, you know internally, you know we're we're quite pushing quite hard on the development side now. So um, I I was quite aggressively looking for a development deal back in the last year. Um, got got close, unfortunately didn't get anything at the moment. So you know we'll keep pushing, and I think I need to keep educating myself and, and, and keep looking for deals and things like that, and you know it will come come to fruition um but we've had um uh my business partner take on a few commercial deals and development deals so i'm involved in that in the project management side and just getting involved with that so i'm excited to see how you know what we learn from those projects and, and what happens on there and documenting them as well and then with the platform we're going to be releasing a lot of courses so these are going to be mini sort of interactive fun courses for for the young people and uh, focus on again on the main topics that i've got the most like listens on on the uh, podcast so we, we did just go to the podcast, we looked at the top like five episodes and we go, okay, cool, let's make them into actual courses where we can be a bit more interactive, we can show some acting, you know, bring our bring our humor into it a bit and bring our fun side into it a bit more. Uh, because that's that's kind of what they, what they want to see. And um, yeah. other than that, yeah, that's that's it, that's the main ones. Um just, just keeping up with the courses and just keep learning basically. 
keep, keep learning. That's always a good uh, a good intention to have going forward. Mm-hmm. So listen, um, I can thank you very much. Uh, I was on your podcast about, I guess, about a year ago now, uh, obviously yeah. virtually. So yeah, we're going to yeah, plan yeah. one in, in the next month or two where yeah, I actually we'll get, get, you and... get face-to-face with the guys. Yeah, that, um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, okay. and again, so, we're having various discussions. Yes, John? To, to put you on the spot slightly, I can uh, have yeah. you actually participated as a passive investor in any of the development projects that have come along in that year? Um, so, sorry, can you word that again? Sorry. Have you participated as an investor, a passive investor, in any of the development projects that have happened over the last year on the platform, Leo platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, we're involved. I'm involved in one of them. Yeah, just the one. Cool, because that's a great way if you're trying to do a development project in the future to learn how fundraising works, how the investor journey works, what a shareholder yeah. agreement looks like. You know, it's a very cheap way to pick up copies of shareholder agreements to see what different developers are doing and to watch how they communicate, watch how they pitch their information, how they set the returns that they're. Uh, offering to the to the audience and as an investor if you're like with the 29 we saw earlier then effectively you're part of a group of people and that you start to understand like what motivates them to invest in that project or they want to invest in my project exactly 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 so i'm going to be getting a lot more involved as well in these deals because i feel like again like you said the educational side of it is is, is priceless and obviously you can ask questions directly to to the developers as well so the, so i sort of get the the first-hand experience but on the other side i think that's a good shout and like i said i want to actually want to get this more involved in my community as well because i feel like the earlier we can do that the earlier people get to see this for them and you know they start learning right. it, but yeah yeah and the, the i'm the guy that came up with the original pricing of 100 pounds because i said the least expensive course that probably has any merit will be about 97 pounds. Mm. So if you want to be a property investor and you can't afford 100 pounds, you probably shouldn't be in the game. But yeah. if you wanted yeah. to get started on the cheap, and instead of buying another course, just put some money in and pay attention. It's like, like learning to swim. You can learn to swim reading books, or you can learn by jumping in and starting to paddle. Um, yeah. So that's one way of doing it. D- dip your toe in the water for, for 100 yeah, pounds. Stick to the low end, but get yeah. in the water. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, listen, again, fantastic. Um, I can always enjoy having you on. I look forward to uh, uh, touching base with you in the next wee while over in, uh, in London. Um, so uh, next broadcast then, as indicated, Ed Morgan's going to join us to talk about the Avon Valley project that is just um, obviously paid out to the investors. And we we'll want to turn this into uh, like a lessons learned. Uh, we've indicated there were some challenges, there were some delays, there were some additional costs. So we're going to try and get into the, the thought process, the decision making that he made on that, etc. cetera. Um, and I think that'll be very beneficial uh, from an educational point of view. So that's next week, um, uh, Yvonne Valley. And um, again, pointing people towards our YouTube channel. Uh, this broadcast will be up in about half an hour. Um, last week, with a really good um, Q&A um, on health and safety uh, in property development, which was very good. So you can see all the past um, broadcasts uh, all John's sort of Ask John Q&A sessions are all there uh, on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, please take the time to subscribe. Um, obviously, the more subscribers we have always uh, helps the channel. So please jump on and subscribe if you haven't already. So that takes us to, to the end. Uh, John was happy today because one, he was back. Two, he got talking to a person from a tech background. So I think, John, I've got to go and find someone who does football and property. And uh, that's my target, my goal now for the next couple of weeks. Got to find someone that, that, that should be an easy one. I could name <laughs> some names for you. So. There's there's pl- plenty, plenty. I don't know. I could maybe try to reach out and find Robbie Fowler. we are probably be the most high profile that's that's we're involved in property. But uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's that's the plan. That's my target now. So listen, thanks very much, um, Akin again. Thanks, John. And uh, we will end it there. And we'll see everyone again uh, next week. Take care, guys. See ya. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.